Okay, in this video we solve question 4 of tutorial sheet number 2. Tutorial sheet number 2, question 4. You can see here the rate of change of radius is given. And in this problem we have both rate of radius, sorry, change of radius and change in angle then we prefer to use polar coordinate system. Again, there is no unique approach to solve this one, but using polar coordinate system is one option, or maybe the easiest option. I put the origin of my coordinate system here, and this is the polar coordinate system, this is particle P, this is its radial position, Okay, I just take it out to draw it much more better. This is the surface of the Earth. This is the origin of my coordinate system, my fixed or global polar coordinate system. Approach 3. And we have another path, path of motion of the particle which is a bigger circle you can see the question says the shuttle P is moving over a circular orbit it means the passive motion of the particle is a circle with constant radius. Okay, this is radius of the Earth. This is the position of my particle, P. And the radius of the bigger circle, which is the passive motion of the shuttle, and this distance is given by h, you can see. It's r plus h. Okay, here we don't need the vector, just the distance. Okay, because we use polar coordinates, approach 3, first of all we need to clarify the unit vectors in the polar coordinates. And we know the unit vectors are important because they represent the positive directions. Then we can have a fixed sign convention to calculate the components of velocities or acceleration and to know their signs we need to have a sign convention for positive direction and unit vectors clarify the positive as we discussed in the lecture at each point this is your position vector r at current time the direction of increasing the radius is the unit vector for the radial component or the positive direction for radial axis in polar coordinates. And normal to this direction, is the unit vector for angular changes. And the direction of the angular change or angular unit vectors is the direction of increasing in angle theta. This is what we discussed in the lecture in detail. We call it e hat theta. This is the polar coordinates and positive directions 
for point P. Also, we know from the definition of the velocity from lectures 1 and 2, as we showed and we proved, the velocity at each point is always tangent to the particle pass at that point. This is my total velocity vector. This is the path of motion and you can see the velocity vector is tangent to the path of motion at point P. This velocity vector has two components. One component in direction of the E hat theta and one direction is one component is in direction of E hat R. The first step is to just project if I project V to the direction of E hat, this one gives me the component V hat theta, the component of velocity vector in direction of angular movements and also if I project it in the direction of E hat R it gives me a vector which is this vector which is my radial radial component of velocity vector and also from the geometry we know if this is this angle be eta for example or alpha whatever you call is this angle is alpha because this side is normal to this one and this one is tangent to the path is normal the radial one, this angle also is alpha. This is what we know from the trigonometry. I just take this triangle and draw it separately just for more clarity in calculations I have this triangle the length of this side is R plus H this one is R this angle is because this is theta and this is pi over 2 90 degree and theta is given yes theta is 60 Theta is 60 degree is given. Then 60 plus 90 gives 150 degree. This is 60 plus 90. The whole thing would be 150 degree. And this angle, what we call it alpha. Again, we know from the trigonometry if you have a triangle like this, if we call this angle B and the length of this side this angle capital C and opposite side to this angle we call C we know the sine A over opposite side length equals to sine b over opposite one equals to equals to sine c over c if I apply this relationship to this triangle which I have, this one gives me sine 
150 degree over the length of the opposite side to this angle r plus h equals to sine alpha over r from this one i can calculate alpha is equal to 28.8 degree this is the first parameter at the same time if you remember from the lecture the university in approach 3 in polar coordinate system which we called it approach 3 fixed polar coordinate system we drive this formulation for the coordinate for the velocity vector r dot it means the first derivative of magnitude of the position vector e hat r plus r theta dot the rate of change of the angle in the direction of angular unit vector this is what we called the radial component of the velocity in polar coordinate and this is what we called the angular these are the magnitude of these two vectors you can see here okay you can see the angular the magnitude of this side which is nothing more than the magnitude of the angular component is V cosine alpha this is equals to the magnitude of angular component of the velocity vector at the same time you can see here the length of this side is nothing more than V and we know is nothing more than the length of velocity vector sine alpha and you know the direction of the VR this is the magnitude of the radial component this one we have here is the magnitude but the direction of this one the radial component is opposite to the e hat r which shows the positive direction of radial changes then if i want to write it down here my vr is equal to i have its magnitude it's v sine alpha but i know the sign is minus because it's placed on the negative side of radial axis or its direction is opposite to the positive direction for radial changes E hat R this is what I have at the same time I know we are is equal to R dot this comes from the formulation of velocity vector in polar coordinate system which we worked it out in the lecture from these two the right the left hand sides are equal then the right hand side should be equal as well then minus v sine alpha equals to r dot and r dot 
is given. Here you can see R that is minus 3000 and uh, 742 meter per second. This is given by the question. If I want to calculate this one, the V is equal to 374 over sine alpha. And also I know the value of the alpha from these trigonometry relationships. I replace it here. Therefore, V is equal to 7. 42 sine 29 degree which is approximately equals to 7767 don't forget the units and you can see this is the magnitude of the velocity vector which we call it speed yes and the question asks for speed this is the complete solution of this example again there is no unique solution you may want to solve the same problem using another coordinate system or another approach that's fine if you can solve it using another approach your solution is the same and your results should be the same as well.